In this video, we'll be focusing on the end user, in this case, a user from our line of business. So I'll be logging in as my line of business user. And the important thing to think about this user is they're not necessarily technically savvy. So they don't necessarily know about all the technical details that are going underneath the covers. They only care about getting access to IT services. So when they first log in, they see their dashboard of IBM Cloud Orchestrator. And what this allows them to do is see in a very concise manner what they need to do, what the status is of their recent requests, and some very basic quota information about their various projects that they have access to. We see in the inbox that there are no actions that need to be taken today. From a request perspective, these are the latest requests that have been executed and their statuses. And at the bottom, the quota information for the current project selected. So right now you see I have all regions selected, but this user also has additional regions available for VMware and our soft layer data center in Washington, DC. Now as a end user, we're typically going to be using the self-service catalog to request access to IT services. So I'll click on the self-service catalog. And specifically for this end user, we've set up a category of line of business offerings where the line of business user can go and access their frequently accessed requests. It's currently set up for only a single service offering, but this could be extended to show all the offerings that a user might need in the future. So let's go ahead and execute the offering. So I'll request a VM with automated placement, and what this does is brings up an offering that allows the user to answer a series of questions the answers of which could be used then to determine where this particular workload should be placed. So for example, is low latency critical to the workload? Let's say yes. Will the workload fluctuate often? Let's say no. Does the workload handle sensitive data? Let's again say yes. And then finally, is HA or DR critical for the workload? Let's go ahead and say yes. Now based on the algorithm that our administrator configured for this particular offering, IBM Cloud Orchestrator is then going to make a recommendation of where this particular workload for a line of business users should be placed. So let's go ahead and click Determine VM Placement. And based on these responses, it says this workload will be deployed to private or on-premises. So all the user needs to do is go ahead and give it a server name. So let's say demo on-premises. And we see that the image was automatically selected based on the services that our cloud administrators want to make available to our line of business users. And then all they need to do is click deploy. So there's no worry about the underlying infrastructure. They don't need to enter any user IDs or passwords for the particular hypervisors or public cloud providers that have been requested. All they need to do in this example was answer the questions that were provided by the administrator and press deploy. Now, if your business workflow dictated that there were a different set of questions that needed to be answered, or you automatically wanted to deploy a given set of resources for a particular request, you could do that too. This was just the example that I showed to add a little business logic into the deployment. Now, if we go ahead and click on requests, we'll be able to track along with this request for the automated placement of the demo. So we can see that right now it's in the process of getting a server. While this is running, let's go ahead and run through that same self-service catalog offering again, this time with some slightly different answers to those questions. Okay, so in this case, let's say low latency is not critical. We'll still say the workload won't fluctuate often. It doesn't handle sensitive data. And maybe HR is critical in this case. So let's go ahead and click Determine VM Placement. Then based on the business logic that I provided this time, it says that this workload will be deployed to public or off-premises. So again, I'm going to give this a server name, say demo off-premises, just so we can track these and show that they actually did what they said they were going to do. And again, I'll push deploy. It'll say my request has been submitted. We'll go ahead and click on requests. And we now see that we have two requests in process. Just as a side note, if there were other business processes that we wanted to include in this workflow handling, such as an approval, we could easily do that. And I'll actually show you an example of how we could do that in a later video. Now the actual deployment of these resources will take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut away and come back after that's completed. Upon refreshing, we now see that both the on-premises and off-premises deployments have been completed. So let's go ahead and check out the resources that are now available to me as the line of business user. So I'll click on Resources, and I see I have two assigned resources, and I can get the details about each one of those if I want to drill down into each one of the names. So for example, I see right now that they've been assigned two private addresses, 
and additionally the off-premises VM has a public IP address assigned to it. This was an optional configuration that I configured in this particular demo environment. Obviously you could disable that if you wanted to by default. So let's just go ahead and actually take a look at what this might look like from a softlayer perspective. Log into softlayer.com as my demo admin. And when I go to the device list, I can see that this virtual server was just provisioned today, and the public IP address of, that ends in 232.42 matches that that's available to the end user in the self-service UI. So that's just a very quick view of how we can easily expose IT resources to various users within our business in a very consumable manner.